You're listening to The Lindia Grant Show. Think on these things with Lindia Grant. Good evening, Radio 1 listeners. Thank you for tuning in to The Lindia Grant Show. Spirit 1340, WYCB, the oldest gospel radio station in Washington, D.C., the first contemporary gospel outlet in the United States. Today is Friday, September 15, 2023. Our show is heard throughout the DMV at 6 p.m. Eastern Time, and we're on YouTube each and every week. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, Think on These Things. Welcome to today's show. My guests are a long friend from years, years ago, Jackie Carter. She is the executive director of the Children's Legacy Theater in Anacostia, right here in the District of Columbia. She's going to have on here a young man with her. We just call him DJ, but I'll let her introduce, I think it's Dwayne, when we come on a little later. I'm gonna. They're going to be talking to us and sharing some upcoming theatrical productions that you will be able to buy tickets to attend. So I want to say hi to you. This evening, Jackie, how are you? I am absolutely wonderful. Thank you for having me on your show. All right. And DJ, say hello. Hello, everybody. Yes, and uh, it's great to be here. All right. Well, first, we're going to hear from Dr. Julianne Malvo, our weekly commentator. She talked about politics and the economy. Just let me tell you a little bit about Dr. Malvo. She is a nationally known economist, former dean of the New College of Ethics Studies at California State University, Los Angeles. She's one of two president emeritus at Bennett College in Raleigh, North Carolina. She earned her PhD in economics. She's a world traveler and speaker, president of Push XL the youth organization founded by Reverend Jesse Lewis Jackson out of Chicago, Illinois. She has much more background, but i just like to share that a little bit every week. Hello, Dr. Julianne. Welcome to today's show. What you got for us? Hey, Lindia. How you doing? It's always a pleasure to be with you. There's so much to talk about today. I'm going to try to move through it very quickly. Um, something of interest might not be the top of the news, but it is very interesting. Mitt Romney, Senator, Republican Senator, says he's not going to run again uh, because it's time for a new generation uh, to take leadership positions in, in Congress. This is a contrast to Mitch McConnell, who had that frozen moment, has had two frozen moments where he just stopped. Um, and he says he's still running, nothing wrong with him. And of course, our, our beloved, and I must say beloved, I'm a native San Franciscan, uh, Senator Dianne Feinstein, who just visibly does not seem to be physically well, she had shingles, she's missed several votes, um, and she's 90 plus. Um, is it time for her to go? I mean, this is a question that people are asking now. Nancy Pelosi, who's over 80, has said she's running. She wants to run to help um, get a Democratic uh, House of Representatives back. But we do have to deal with the aging issue, and it's a sensitive one for folks like me, um, who will hit 70 in, in a few days. Uh, it was a little sensitive, but the fact of the matter is there's a difference between a vital 70 and a decrepit 70, a vital 80 and a decrepit 80, and we know that. And we also know that your physical condition may not necessarily reflect your mental condition. Joe you know, Biden just came back from five days around the world, and that is exciting in that at the, um, he called a meeting and basically talked about how to help with the G G20 how to help the Partnership for Infrastructure and Investment all over the world in developing countries. So one of the things that should be interesting to all of us is the possibility, he talks about the Lojito um, corridor. It's a corridor between Congo, Zambia, and Angola, and it would help to build a railroad there. Here's what we know about the world economy, is that when people are productive with their infrastructure work, it boosts world GDP. So this is so-called too old Biden, and 77% of Democrats say he is, but it's going to five, five days around the world, moving through time zones, and offering innovative programming. He spent September 11th in um, Alaska, 
I believe Alaska is either Alaska, Alaska or Hawaii, and now my age is showing. But he he basically did spend September 11th celebrating or commemorating what happened on September 11th, 2001. There were memorials all over the country, but especially the New York one was especially moving, and that's where we lost the most people. Um, but everywhere in the country, people were basically looking at what happened and what changed because of September 11th. And I would ask those who are listening to ask yourself, what changed September 11th? What changed for you? Now, we may have a government shutdown. We we may have a government shutdown. The House Republicans are doing what they do best, squabbling. They actually have put on the agenda, and Kevin McCarthy, looking very pitiful, really pitiful, uh, said that they were initiating an impeachment inquiry. Now, you're not supposed to have an inquiry or anything with the word impeachment in it until you have a vote. He hasn't called for a vote because he doesn't have the vote. And so instead, there's this inquiry. Note that President Biden and his team have sent over 1,000 pages of um, answers to subpoenas. They have been very responsive. I've seen three Republican members of Congress on television the last week saying they don't think there's anything there in terms of impeachable. They want to tie President Biden to his son, Hunter. And Hunter, of course, is in all kinds of trouble. But the president has said he's had nothing to do with it. However, and this investigation in the House has gone nine months. Do you hear me? Nine months. But they mm-hmm. still want to essentially attempt to impeach Biden. This is just payback. They just want yes. to impeach Biden because, uh, because Trump was impeached, not once but twice. That's he right. Said it again. Not once but twice. Now, um, United Auto Workers are fit to go on strike. We're talking on Wednesday, uh, so we don't know what's going to happen, but most labor economists are saying that it's very likely that they will strike. I'll tell you why. The UAW has asked for 40% over four years. Um, they've asked for cost of living increases. They want pensions restored. They, gave, they did a big give back in 2008 when uh, the big three were in trouble, and now they, wanna give, they want their money back, and they mm-hmm. want more retiree benefits. It seems that the corporations of 4GM and um, used to be Chrysler, the three, um, the big three are interested in meeting them halfway on wages, but they don't want to do anything else with pensions or anything else. And so um, the the union has enough money to support the entire labor force for three months in their strike fund. It's over $800 million in their strike fund. They can pay everybody on strike. 500 bucks a week plus their medical benefits for three months. That's a big stick to carry. At the same time, if they go on strike, um, if they if they go on strike, it hurts the economy badly. Um, auto workers represent between four and five percent of all workers. Uh, there's and not only do they represent all those workers, but you have the supporting industry uh, with auto. So if they go on strike, first of all, the cost of your car is going to go up if you need a new car. And, but secondly, and more importantly, it will be inflationary. And thirdly, it will have some economic impact. So many are wondering whether or not President Biden will say something. But their contract runs out on Thursday night, uh, the 14th of September. And if they, they, they probably will not go on a full strike. What they'll probably do is do scattered strikes in various plants around the country. And um, that's going to be as harmful, not as harmful, but it will be harmful as well because it will affect the supply chain, and I know we've all gotten tired of hearing about the supply supply chain. Um, let me see. How much more time do I have? Yeah, two more minutes. Two more minutes. Wonderful. Um, Daniello uh, Cavalante uh, was captured. This was a man who crab walked up the wall in the prison, and uh, I'm laughing because it was funny, but it really wasn't funny. Terrorized an area of, of Pennsylvania where he was he was out. For two weeks, for two weeks, this man was able to go without being captured. He's finally been captured. He's a um, Brazilian native who killed his girlfriend. This is not top of the line news, but it's news because what you had to look at, if you watched it on television or anywhere, was the number of law enforcement they had out. They must have had hundreds of them out looking for this one man. And what the cost of that was, uh, he was very slick. We'll give him slick. But we, and I was told that we ought to give law enforcement props. I don't know about that. How did the man get out of the prison when the guard was watching? That guard has since been fired. The uh, head of that jail has since um, 
I think he's on leave or he may have retired. I don't know what he did. Something happened to him. But here's what we do know. Thinking about what's happening there, what's happening in these prisons? Because a disproportionate number of black men are in these prisons. What is happening in these prisons? We absolutely have to pay some attention to it. Um, now, the shut, as I said, the shut, government might shut down because McCarthy, um, his, his, that, it's not him. It's the far right of the Republican Party. Funding for government runs out on September 30th. Um, so they have three choices. One, government can shut down. Two, they can do a continuing resolution, which means everything will be funded at the level that is funded now. So we go into fiscal 2024 on October 1 but we would keep the budget from 2023. So that's the second option. And then that means they will continue talks. And the third option is that they will pass the budget, uh, that part. Um, mm -hmm. So th there are 12 uh, bills that are needed to pass to keep government around. They could pass all of them. They could pass some of them. I don't think they're going to pass any of them, quite frankly, because they seem to be deadlocked. But I'm hoping that they pass up. What we do know is we do not want government to shut down. When it does shut down, only essential workers work, and they don't get paid. Everybody else does not get paid. We Not only do we not want government to shut down, but we want these people to accelerate these talks so we're not looking at December, holiday time, and saying, are we going to shut down? So this is a real possibility, and it's the right, far right wing of the Republican Party. They want to cut the budget. Generally, at a time like this, we keep the budget level. They're saying they want to cut the budget. If we go too far, the budget will automatically cut by about 1%, which many will say that's not a big deal, but when you're dealing with what we pay for with the federal budget, it could be a big deal. So we have to pay attention to that. We, it's only two weeks till September 30th. So we really have to pay attention to that and to hope that um, the Republicans get good sense. So that's a high hope. Uh, yes, McCarthy, it is. McCarthy is just being held hostage by the right wing of his party, the Mar Marjorie Taylor Greens and mm -hmm. um, Matt Getzes of the party, and they're the ones who are calling the tune unless some moderate Republicans step up and say, stop the nonsense, we're going to vote with the Democrats. Yes. All right. Well, thank you, Dr. Julian. You got it all in. We appreciate you. We'll talk thank to you, you next appreciate week. It. All Absolutely. Right. Okay, right. take care. And now, and now we're going to go to our commercial break. Back in a moment. If it wasn't for my care coach at MyHealth, I probably wouldn't be so healthy right now. As a man, you know we don't get checkups or see a doctor regularly anyways. It's probably just a man thing because none of my partners go either. We know we should, but we just don't and hope it works out. So what changed for you? MyHealth assigned me a care coach, somebody that gives one-on-one -on -one help, answer questions, explain things, and helps set my appointments. She also helped me understand what having high blood pressure really means and ways to manage it so it doesn't kill me. It ain't nothing to play with. If you're a member of MyHealth, ask for a care coach. I'm glad I got mine. At AmeriHealth, if you need a care coach, you can have one. Just call us at 1-877-759-6224 to get connected. 1-877-759-6224. This program is funded in part by the government of the District of Columbia Department of Healthcare Finance, Mayor Muriel Bowser. Washington and former religion columnist, Lyndia Grant. Ida B. Wells, born into enslavement, was a journalist and activist. An avid reader, she read through the entire Bible many times. Wells was once asked to leave the ladies' car and sit in the color train. She refused and train officials pushed her. Ida B. Wells retaliated but was pushed off the train at the next stop. A crowd of whites applauded. She vowed to get even. Three of her close friends were lynched for opening businesses that cut into profits of whites. Everything changed for Wells. She spoke out internationally against lynching of blacks for the rest of her life. Through her efforts, lynching in America nearly disappeared by the time of her death. And NAACP founder, we salute Ida B. Wells for Women's History Month. Read more in the religion column of the Washington Informer, an award-winning African-American newspaper. We don't report crime or gossip, just positive news. Pick up the Washington Informer or visit us online at WashingtonInformer.com. Call 202-561-4100 for more information. This is Frank Smith with the African-American Civil War Museum in Washington, D.C., located at 1925 Vermont Avenue Northwest on the Green Line. Did you know that a recent study found that children who visit museums do better in school and in life than children who do not? 
So parents, teachers, and preachers, let's get moving. I promise you if you bring your children to the African American Civil War Museum, they will be inspired by the images that they see. They will be impressed by our living history reenactors who are always available. And they will be involved in our scavenger hunt that takes them throughout our exhibit. That's the African American Civil War Museum, 1925 Vermont Avenue. Our hours are 10 to 6.30 on weekdays, 12 to 4 on Saturdays and Sundays. See it. See it. Thank you for tuning in to the Lydia Grant Show. Now we on to the second half of our show. We're going to be talking with Children's Legacy Theater Executive Director Jackie Carter. And she will have her production manager on with her to talk to us about what's getting ready to happen over there at the theater. They've been doing this for years. But I'm going to start off by talking to the director, Executive Director Jackie. What is Children's Legacy Theater? Tell us a little bit about it and what it's all about. Yes, thank you. Children's Legacy Theater is a full-service theater organization. Full-service means we train teens ages 13 to 17, uh, sometimes as high as 18, in all of the theater arts disciplines. And then after training, we produce and present live theater to the community. Oh, I like that. Okay, how long you all been doing that? I personally have been doing this for about 30 years in Ward 8. Um, training young people in the theater arts, and in fact, using theater as a way to help young people find themselves. We produce, um, I say, about six plays in a theater season, which mm-hmm. is a full year, and 60% of our plays are actually written by our students. But we also produce renowned playwrights like um, James Baldwin, Lorraine Hansberry, like that. Do you have... Um... Any bragging stories of things that they have done with others outside of your theater, or they just have aspirations? Absolutely. So um, currently, we just finished producing a, a, a theater play called Break Every Change, which we did in partnership with the Department of Behavioral Health, which warned the community about the dangers of opioid and fentanyl um, usage. Um, and we also are about to do a play with the Office of the Attorney General. Their event up at Howard University, we're producing, presenting a play written by one of our students entitled How She Escapes. Now, the other side of that is we have, um, I've had young people who are now working for uh, people like Jay-Z, Beyonce, um, designing clothes for Housewives of Hollywood, Not that we expect all of our children to go into the arts, but we do use theater as a way of helping them find themselves and finding their voice. Oh, that is so exciting. I I know these young people. Maybe I need to have some of them on my show. You need to come back and call me and tell me uh, how to get get some of them scheduled so we can talk about it. Now we're going to go to um, uh, Dwayne Harris. He is the program manager at Children's Legacy say to uh, Dwayne, what are we lacking as a company over there? What what's lacking? Um, me personally, I would say that we're lacking a lot of a uh, funding uh, mm-hmm. because a lot of times we have numerous amount of kids, about uh, forty to fifty overflowing applications of, of kids who want to come in. Um, or you know the funding to 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 uh, hire more theater professionals. Um, we're just missing a lot of uh, funding from, you know, uh, the community. Um, we're also missing, like, uh, our own space. We want a building where we can house all of Children's Legacy Theater um, employees and all of our equipment, have our own stage. You know, we we want um, a lot more space. That way we are able to uh, accommodate more of the youth and more of the um, theatrical uh, presentations that we are hoping to present in the future. I like that. I was thinking if I wasn't so busy, I could take that project on myself. That's exciting and something I would enjoy doing. Well, um, tell me, what do you want to reach out to the Children's Legacy Theater for? Uh, That was a question. I wasn't quite sure what that means, but tell us what that means. Oh, so, so, um, yeah, so the question was like, who do do we want to, to reach out? Um, we want anyone who who's willing to sponsor CLT 
on any specific projects or as many projects as they see fit, and not just for sponsorship, but we also, you know, are, are accepting donations. That way we're able to supply the kids with the proper equipment, you know, with their pay, with, you know, other things that, um, like meals. Um, so we're we're looking for anyone who's willing to sponsor or donate. We want anybody who's willing to reach out and, you know, help the, the Ward 7 and Ward 8 youth, um, you know, through CLT. Um um, actually, you know, we have a uh, CLT sponsorship level system. Um, Ms. Jackie, would you like to elaborate a little bit more on the sponsorship level system? Oh, absolutely, and thank you for that. Um, so you could be a gold sponsor and sponsor our whole entire season to give us a call at 202-997-1856. You could also be a silver sponsor and sponsor half of our theater season. Or you could be a bronze sponsor and sponsor a production. One of the things that are the important reasons why we need the sponsorship and we need more money is because these are after-school jobs for our kids. And one of the things that we learn is that teenagers, they want a job. If you give, them a, a, give the teenager a choice, would you rather go on the corner and sell drugs or would you like to go work and learn a skill and earn some money? They will take the ladder every time. It's, it's been proven. So we need that sponsorship. We also, like, as, as DJ just said, we need our buildings. Because right now, in 2023, we serviced over 150 young people. And as DJ just explained, we have an overflow now of about 50 young people that we're, you know, scratching the fire space for, um, creating more projects. Like, we're just now starting to go into film because some of our young people want to learn how to make film. So summer 2024, we will present our first 10-minute film festival in conjunction with our 10-minute play festival. So we need that sponsorship. We need sponsors to come out and show the love for our young people and, you know, put the money where it can be most effective with Children's Legacy Theater. Well, I have a lot of years of experience and my heart and, and soul is telling me to have you all call me. Dwayne called me uh, on the weekend because I do work so we can talk about how I can help. I have a list of corporations over the years that I've raised a lot of funds from and I have some contacts. So let me see if I can help you all, okay? Um, okay. Next question. Um how can the youth how how can other outside youth join your organization and then after that question i want you to tell us the next show you have coming up right so the youth can join our organizations um by calling in uh, to our um office at 202-997-1856 they can call in and um, inquire about, you know, joining the program and, you know, what it has to offer. Um, or they can go to the CLT web website, uh, which is the Children's Legacy Theater 8.org. Um, and also they can come in person um, to the Solomon G. Brown Community Center, located on the third floor of the Salvation Army Building at 2300 MLK Avenue Southeast. It's Washington, D.C., and then the zip code 20020. Um, so they can use all those different methods to uh, call in and try to apply, you know, inquire about everything. Um, and then our next production that we have uh, currently going on is uh, Robert Smalls, The Black Mariner. <clears throat> that project um, will be going up in December of this year, 2023, uh, the 15th, 16th, and 17th at 6.30 p.m., and then, Ms. Jackie, would you like to elaborate a little bit more on the uh, Robert Smalls? Sure. Um, Robert Smalls was born, I think, in 1822, um, and, uh, enslaved. And his uh, enslavers taught him how to navigate ships. <clears throat> and as a young man of 19, he was put in charge of <clears throat> one of the Confederate ships and because he knew all of the passcodes to get past the checkpoints during the Civil War, he was able to navigate the ship, the Confederate ship, through to um, the north and turn the ship over to the, the Union Army. He also <clears throat> uh, educated himself and became a United States representative. 
Well, I want you and to stop. You... I want you to stop right there because I know all about Robert Smalls because you know I was the project director for the African American Civil War Memorial, and Robert Smalls is one of the stars in our museum. He has descendants here in the D.C. area. Have you all met them? We have not, but would love to. But he has family here. We used to have him come down to the museum. Put a note to help me hook you up with that. And with Councilman Frank Smith. We have had so much with uh, Robert Smalls and all of the family that's involved with him around his story. So I just wanted to say that. I was so delighted when I saw it in your brochure. Well, Jackie, uh, you and I still got a lot more to do together, don't we? Looks like we got to keep yes. right on working together like we did before. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and and Dwayne, thank you, because you are so diligent. He has called me so much. I said, my goodness, this young man, if I had some money, I'd hire him myself. So he's a bad chick. He, this man, just, he plays. He don't play. He works. So i like to yes. thank you. For being so diligent yeah, okay. and being on top of your game, Dwayne. So of course, of you course. all I thank you as well. Yes, indeed. So I am gonna help you out with some fundraising. I'm also gonna hook you up with the African American Civil War Museum and those contacts. All right, so I'm gonna go to my clothes now. Uh well folks, that does it for our show this week. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and never miss a show. Because when you click subscribe, the copy will automatically come to you. Read my column in the Washington Informer newspaper. Call us at 240-602-6295. Thank you for tuning in to today's show. I hope this show today was Jackie Carter and the Children's Legacy Theater and Dwayne, we call him DJ, Dwayne Harris, and Dr. Julian Malvo's take on politics were helpful to you. Then, I always like to remit, uh, invite you to my church. Join us at the All Nations Baptist Church, where our pastor is the Reverend Dr. James Coleman. We're located at number two, Rhode Island Avenue, Northeast, Washington, D.C. If you enjoy singing, give me a call. The number at the church is 202-832-9591. Each week I close with the quote by Earl Nightingale, who once said, words, thoughts, and deeds have a boomerang effect. So be careful what you send out. We do become what we think about. And scripture says, my people perish for the lack of knowledge. So think on these things from the Lindia Grant Show. I am your host, Lyndia Grant. Until next week, good day. Thank you for listening to the Lyndia Grant Show. Think on these things with your host, Lyndia Grant.